we're back, baby. And today we're redesigning the ScotRail train tracking application that I used on my honeymoon to navigate around various cities in Scotland. I found that although this UI was quite easy to use, it lacked a couple of basic UX optimizations. And I think if we tweaked them, it would have been such a delight to use. So here, as always, we've got our style guide. Um, I've plucked all of the colors from the existing UI and we're going to swap them over to using Inter so we can take advantage of that nice thin medium font and uh, control the visual hierarchy very discreetly. Because really the main problem with the, with the UI here is that there's a lot of things that are seemingly equal weight competing for my attention. The location, all of these controls seem like they're the similar weight and then this big button also pulls my attention. So the main issue is the visual hierarchy and Inter is really great at addressing that because it has that nice thin medium font weight. Here's the stories, everything we want to achieve in a UI like this. I'm not going to go through them. We're just going to get right into it and see what we come up with. Starting out with the header and the navigation as I do with most of my mobile UIs, but this actually turns out to be my first mistake. Eventually, I completely refactor this and move away from the header and footer altogether, uh, opting for a more contained UX. Um, and it just goes to show you that there's nothing that beats new synthesis and actually talking to users. If you're just redesigning something, the temptation to go top to bottom is sometimes a little too strong and you can end up reintroducing the same problems again um, by just making it look more uh, aesthetically pleasing. Next, I wanted to address the strange horizontal positioning of the from and to labels in the existing UI um, that kind of looked a little jarring. So instead of having the labels off to the side, I'm just embedding them on top of the input element um, to signal to the user that that label is for that form control, but it just doesn't push all the content to the right. Now here for the ticket type selector, I was tempted initially to use a dropdown, but I know that whenever you're tempted to use a dropdown on mobile, you should probably consider just displaying all the options as large buttons instead. Uh, so that's what I'm doing here. However, after looking at this for a while, I kind of changed my mind about this. It's obvious now that the entire context of the form should be switching based on the ticket type. So eventually we move these controls up to the top as tabs instead, um, allowing us to have a much more customized look for each different ticket type. Now, a lot of times when I'm doing these redesigns, I first like to just reproduce the UI and level up the UI a little bit with some more polish and best practices. And that way I can see things in context a little more clearly and then apply UX treatments on top of those new clean UI elements. And then the whole thing comes together neatly. So that's what you're seeing me do now. It felt like some kind of notification and settings interface was missing from the existing UI. So we're just popping them into the header here. So if a train is ever late or I need to be notified about some upcoming travel, that can happen there. And now you'll see we're finally getting around to making these selections into tabs instead and defaulting to round trip as I feel like most people generally uh, come back from their destination. It's very rare someone will go all the way to Edinburgh, for example, and just stay there indefinitely. And instead of totally throwing out these lovely icon buttons, we're repurposing them to let the user specify how many people will be traveling in their party. As I'm going through and fixing up the color scheme here, I'm also realizing that the user's attention is kind of not going to be focused in the way I want it to be. And that's because the background is a subtle gray, uh, but the navigation and the header are both saturated white and dark blue accordingly. Um, so we're going to go through and make sure that these individual input fields pop a little more by making the background white and then having the inputs themselves seem a little gray. Uh, that way it kind of implies to the user, you should focus your attention here on these elements first. Yeah. 
You'll also see that I've went back to the pattern of placing the label to the left of the value in the input. Um, but the difference is this time the input is wrapped inside a container. So the visual balance has been resolved. The user's eye knows exactly how wide the given input should be. And so that the horizontal alignment isn't as much of a problem anymore. And of course, we need some way to notify the user if there's been any significant change to the trains currently on the tracks and if it affects their individual travel, that's of course of much more importance. Um, but instead of placing this at the bottom of the UI, like the existing app does, we're going to place it in the header uh, directly to the right of the title. That way it's clear and present to the user. And if there are many trains derailed, they might not even consider scheduling transit that day. And whenever you are having a user do a very involved search like this, it really needs to be within its own context. If the user is doing a very complicated operation inside of a child container where there is a parent navigation, uh, like you're seeing at the bottom and that screen on the right there, uh, it can be kind of overwhelming and it doesn't really make a lot of sense from the user's perspective. So we're getting rid of the header and the footer altogether <clears throat> and letting the user perform that search explicitly in its own kind of window. You probably also noticed that I made a big mistake there and not realizing that adult, child and senior tickets all cost different amounts. Uh, so having that one, two or more passengers selector just wasn't going to work. And we're switching to a simpler UI uh, where users can explicitly specify who's going to be in their party and which quantity of each category as well. Uh, that way they get a very clear understanding of exactly how much it's going to cost for their very unique party. Boom, and there we go. I really feel like this is a significant step forward from the existing UI and allows the user to focus on completing one very involved task at a time without overwhelming them with all the extra stuff like the navigation, the header, and all that. So as you'd expect from a UI like this, you can switch contexts first because all the other controls are dependent on whether or not you're getting a round trip ticket, a one-way ticket, or an any return type ticket. And then of course, the most important controls appear at the top. Where are we actually going? Um, I can toggle to display these optional recent trips and speed things up if I want to. But if I don't want to click on them, they don't take up valuable real estate. And then I specify the time and whether or not I want an adult, a child, or a senior on the trip with me. Then of course I can click this and I'll be shown a timetable from which I can select the train that's the most appropriate and the best fit for me during my travel. Uh, now obviously a UI like this would necessitate a dedicated home screen experience and a UI like that would probably contain things like, um, hey, you usually go on a trip to Edinburgh around this time. Here's all the next trains that are going to Edinburgh um, or here's any major delays that are currently on the map. Uh, stuff like that would be really easy to throw in a UI like that, but but not going to do that today. Uh, may save that for another video, trying to keep these ones nice and airtight. Thanks for bearing with me while I was away, folks. Uh, expect some more juicy design content over the next couple of weeks. Hope you enjoyed this one and have a great week.